Welcome to Ratios and Proportions class. I'm Sean Berg, also known as Super Teacher Guy. I've been teaching middle school math for over 20 years, and I'm so excited to bring you this material because I've seen kids succeed to a great level and also struggle so much depending on what they understood about ratios because ratios goes from comparing two things all the way up into algebra. And so through this class, my goal is to make you an expert. The way this class is organized, it's four weeks, four videos. Video one is an introduction. Video two goes a little bit deeper into ratios, ratio tables, unit rates, double number lines. Video three introduces reciprocals and proportions. And then video four really puts it all together and takes you into graphing and looking at a constant of proportionality, which in many ways is doing algebra. So I'm so excited for you to make this growth, to make this transition from beginner ratio student all the way through to expert. So today in video one, we're going to spend time learning to understand ratios and what it means to have equivalent ratios. So for today, hopefully you have in front of you a day one ratio organizer. So this is where you'll take notes for today and follow along so that as you write, it'll help stick in your brain just a little bit better. First of all, let's discuss what a ratio is. And this definition right here, it's pretty simple, but it gets the idea across. So if you want to write that right here where it says ratio, it's a relationship between two amounts that can be defined mathematically. Take a second, pause the video, copy that down, and then continue the video. To begin with, let's look at this art that we have for you. Now, this is uh, contemporary or modern art that was painted uh, almost 100 years ago, and it's called red, blue, and yellow. We're gonna focus on the ratio or the relationship between the red and the blue. So again, you have this sheet, Right here is where you're going to sort of think and answer my questions regarding this painting. First, we have a red section and a blue section. Now, these are called columns. These vertical elements we'll call a column. And this horizontal, that's called a row. So in the first row, you write red and blue. Now, whenever you think about a ratio, it's important in your mind to keep track of which is the more and which is the less. So when we get started doing this, you're always going to have a spot or a way to write these words more or less above your information to keep track. So we can see in the diagram that there's less blue than red. So I wrote more for red and less for blue. Now, my question to you is, if this blue rectangle is considered one unit, how many do you think, how many similar units are there that would make up the red area? We'll pause for a second and write down a guess, but write it in pencil. If you guessed about nine, then I think that's accurate. I actually used my pencil to break up this red square slash rectangle into about nine equal pieces. So I think the answer is nine. If you chose eight or 10 or something even further off than that, that's okay. The idea is to understand that this is a ratio. We're comparing the amount of red to the amount of blue in an object. Now we're going to continue by talking a little bit more about ratios before we bring in our next activity. So here's a quick knowledge drop for you all. A ratio, this is like the same definition as before, but a little bit more complex. A ratio is a numeric relationship between two amounts that can be explained as how many of one amount is included in the other amount. So that's something that we'll be discussing for the rest of this lesson today. Now, when we write a ratio, we use a colon, which is those two vertical dots to represent the word two. So this is how we say the relationships between the two parts of the ratio. This is read the same as one to two. And this relationship is read the same as two to one. Now, the order of the numbers does matter, and we'll cover that in subsequent videos. So here's the new context. I created this drink called Chill Aid, and my first flavor is grape. So you'll see that this powder is going to create my grape Chill Aid. So please watch 
and think about ratios as I put a spoonful into each separate cup. Each spoonful is equivalent to the one before it and the one after it. Now I'm going to mix them up and I want you to notice and wonder, what do you notice? What do you wonder about these three drinks? Maybe, maybe you can write something down. We're about to use the section in your organizer that says chill aid recorder. So be prepared for that on the next slide but let's watch the rest of the video so we can really notice and wonder about these three these three cups of grape chili so i'm just moving around the two cups so you can see more clearly the colors and i want you to notice that these two colors are the same this one is lighter now this next slide, okay, this next slide is where you can see, and I'm asking you to review and record the amount in each cup on your day one organizer. So the first cup is one cup of water and two spoonfuls of drink mix. The second cup is two cups of water mixed with three spoonfuls of drink mix. And that last cup is two cups of water with four spoonfuls of drink mix. So if you remember, after you've recorded this information, I move the cups around just so you can more clearly see that cup three and cup one are the same color. And that's what we're going to talk about beginning on the next slide. So can you explain why the glass in the middle is a lighter color compared to the two on either side? That's the question that we really want to think about in terms of ratios, because remember this class is about ratios and ratios do come into play when recognizing why two glasses have the same color and one is lighter. So here we have a different representation of what I just showed in the video. And I'd like to pause for a second and talk about what a batch is. When have you ever used the word batch in everyday living, in your everyday life? I'm assuming it's with cooking. And that's a logical place to think about it because when you cook, you put different things together a batch is not just one item, but multiple ingredients put together. It's the same here. A batch is a quantity or something created all at one time. So this is our original batch. It's one cup of water to two spoonfuls of purple powder. The question I have for you is, now that we know what a batch is, which other diagram here shows multiple batches? Is it the two to three ratio? or the two to four ratio, or is it both? Are they both showing multiple batches? Once we create a diagram that shows that one to two is one batch, we can then see and explain that the two to four mixture is two batches of the same drink. So that's why it was the same color. And also that explains why that middle drink was a lighter purple. So. Can you reflect back on when I first asked you the question, can you explain why the grape chillaid in the middle glass is a lighter color? And did your thoughts match the idea of talking about numbers? The fact that this is one less spoonful of powder is why it was lighter color and also why it's gonna taste not quite as sugary or grapey. We can continue to use this model, this diagram to help us, however, as we continue to make more and more of the grape chill aid, it's useful to keep track of how to do this. Now, one way to do this is to use a, any guesses out there? Not a drum, that's a drum roll. Well, if you guessed a table, then you're correct. Now these tables are not the exact same kind that we use in math to keep track of ratios, but we do use them sometimes in lieu of a desk when we have to write something down. Now the actual tables we use You've already kind of seen one at the beginning of this class. It is this. Here's the actual table we're going to be using today to keep track of all the cups of water and all the amounts of purple powder we put in the water to make our chill aid. On your organizer, it's going to be this table right here. And you'll notice I already have these titles, cups, 
and purple mix. And so if you guys can write that into your table, after I fill in the columns with cups and purple mix, now I'm going to fill in those first two ratios that we had. One to two is the first ratio. One cup to two spoonfuls of purple mix. That is one of the ratios that we used. Now, two cups and four spoonfuls of purple mix, that is an equivalent ratio. And I can see it here because it's like one batch, but twice as much. So think back to the definition of a ratio, and it's the way you can compare one amount to another. And so keep that in mind as we continue our journey of making larger and larger amounts of grape chili. So now if you want to add new data in this table, it should be based on the idea of batches and using that idea, can you figure out a new ratio that will be the same purple chili drink flavor, the same color? Go ahead and put it in your table or just say it out loud, just in case you want to keep your table neat then just keep it in your mind for a moment. Well, here's the next one that I think is equivalent and it's three cups of water to six spoonfuls of mix. And you can see that now that is just three batches of the original purple chili. Is this the same number set that you chose? Maybe. Now we're gonna add another row in our purple chili table where we can have even more of the same drink. So again, what numbers could we use to make another equivalent ratio? Go ahead and put it in your table and we'll see if it matches my table. Well, I chose six cups of water to 12 spoonfuls of purple mix. You might have chosen a smaller number of cups of water, but you should have a reason why you think your ratio is equivalent to all of these. How do you think I knew that six to 12 was equivalent to three to six, two to four, and one to two. So the way I knew that six to 12 was equivalent was a couple ways. One, I knew I just kept adding more and more batches of the same original batch. So I knew that it had to be equivalent. But I can also see mathematically that this ratio of one to two, the purple mix is always twice as much as the number of cups of water. So four is twice as much as two, six is twice as much as three and 12 is twice as much as six. Now that pattern will exist in any ratio table that is full of equivalent ratios. Not the fact that it's times two, but the fact that it's times or divided by something. That's always gonna be there. That's another reason why I know, and maybe you can explain now in your own words, how can you explain that the ratio of four to 10 is not equivalent? To the rest of the ratios. Pause it and think about it and then begin playing again once you know you can describe why 4 to 10 doesn't work. Great, and now here is a picture representation of why this ratio of four cups of water to 10 spoonfuls of purple mix is not going to taste the same or look the same as all the rest. And in fact, this extra two spoonfuls is going to make this drink a little bit stronger than the other ones because it's not just four batches it's four batches plus two extra spoonfuls so down here at the bottom we have a place for you to write down the definition of equivalent ratios and i have two here one is more a little bit more confusing than the other what i recommend you write down is two ratios are considered equivalent if one can be expressed as a multiple of the other so if one to two is the ratio and two to four is the ratio, I can see that they're equivalent because one multiplied by two is two and two multiplied by two is four. So this idea of multiple means that as it grows, it's almost like you're skip counting in a way. And that's kind of what this says too, just a little bit more complicated. Two or more ratios that express the same relation or comparison of numbers. And in this case, that relation is the times two, twice as many spoonfuls of purple mix as cups of water, or half as many cups as spoonfuls of purple mix. So that's what it takes to make equivalent ratios. So your homework is going to relate to this idea of equivalent ratios and tables and batches. So remember what we learned, make sure you use your notes as you go through the classwork and submit that to me on OutSchool so that I can look at it and then give you any feedback before you continue on.
to the second lesson. I appreciate your work today. Thank you very much. This brings us to the end of class one, but if you still want to hang out for a moment, I'm just going to show you the homework here in full color so you can see it. The first page of practice does involve just understanding how to say and speak ratios. Remember when I said the order of the numbers matters? Well, the order of the words does matter. So when it says bananas to apples, you need to write the ratio in that order and so on and so forth. And then problems two and problems three, this one you get to be creative in writing two different sentences that use ratios to describe the number of eyes and legs in this picture. And then your next page is dealing with cats and ratios of parts of a cat. And then finally, there is one question about making batches of bird food, which I look forward to seeing your responses on. And then your last one is creative. We get to look around where you live and create a ratio of two things and draw a model of them. Then enter some of those equivalent ratios in this table. Make sure you label each column. Remember we had things like cup and purple mix or red and blue. So whatever you choose to compare, make sure you begin with those labels. And if you remember, also write the more on the less side because that'll help you keep track as you go through your table. So again, thank you very much and I will see you again soon.